Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of CUDA Crash Course. My name is Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and we're going to do yet another optimization for our uh, uh, sum reduction kernel that we've been working on for the past uh, four previous videos. So as kind of a refresher, let's look at the different things that we've uh, done so far. So we started out with a very basic sum reduction kernel where we want to take a very large vector as an input. Uh, in this case, we're just showing, say, 16 elements. But in reality, uh, the vector that we're working with in our example is 2 to the 16 elements, so uh, 65, 536 total integers. And what we want to do is basically add them all up into a single value. Now, at each of these iterations, of course, uh, all of these uh, individual additions are completely uh, independent of each other. So, uh, you know, adding the first two elements and then the next two and the next two and the next two into partial sums does not depend on any of the other elements. Now, in our very basic one, we saw that it had a lot of warp divergence, meaning that a lot of the threads in each warp weren't active at any given time. Uh, what we did was we indexed based on, you know, the corresponding thread ID to the uh, vector index. So here, Thread 0 accesses element 0, thread 10 accesses element 10. But all the intermediate, say, um, odd numbered threads were never active. So we've got some waste there. And so we fixed that later on by instead using consecutive threads. So in this case, we made sure that we didn't have this big warp divergence where only half the threads in the warp were ever active at a time. So um, a pretty simple fix. All we needed to do was just change how we indexed things. And then we went further, uh, even further, and we dealt with uh, shared memory bank conflicts by instead of having all the threads kind of spread out uh, based upon the stride that we're accessing, we instead changed our loop in order to have the threads uh, access consecutive chunks of memory. That way we avoided shared memory bank conflicts like this. So, you know, whenever we're accessing uh, things from shared memory, if we're accessing piece of data or addresses that fall inside of the same bank, if those addresses are not the same address, the they will get serialized. And so instead of, you know, all the threads going to all 32 different banks, in the case of a warp, and taking a total of five cycles or so for all threads, um, the serialization happens. So in order for all 32 threads to load their values, it, and it will instead take, say, 15 cycles, so 3x is long. And so that was another fix we did. Then we moved on a little bit further, and uh, we noticed that after the first iteration, only half of our threads were active at any given, or after the first iteration, and that's because we're doing this sum reduction, so we're dividing by two every single time. So we thought, hey, well, you know, because there's so little work in those uh, threads that get eliminated after the first iteration, well, instead of launching all of these threads that will just kind of die out immediately, just pack it into uh, that little bit of chunk of work into other threads, which is what we did here. So we have the number of threads that we put in, and then we had the first iteration where we're first loading all the data into shared memory. It instead not only loads into shared memory, but it will perform this first uh, iteration of, uh, yeah, this first iteration of some reduction ahead of time before that loop that we have. Now, you know, we did a, we've done a pretty good job so far optimizing the kernel, but we can still take it even further. So in this case, what do we, what's left to look at? So we talked about how half the threads are active, or, or only half the threads are active after the first iteration. Now let's think of, you know, the final iterations of the loop and maybe some wasted stuff that's going on there. So in the final iterations of the loop, um, all the threads, uh, only a single warp is actually active at that point, because remember, we're, uh, we're decreasing uh, or dividing by two. So this uh, shift operation right here, you can think of it as dividing by two. Uh, this, that, that's essentially what the uh, bit shifting does. And when we hit uh, 32, only the lower 32 threads within each thread block are going to be active. So what does this mean? This means that all of the other threads will still be going through this for loop, but they will all be failing this TID less than S check. 
and because of that you have just a lot of you know wasted checks um, you know threads that are essentially just spinning doing these checks but you know not actually doing any useful work and so uh, this leads us to have you know different control flow paths going on so we've got you know most of the threads at the very end doing nothing uh, and going down one path and then a very small majority or a small portion of the threads actually still doing this loop. So what can we do? Well, since we know that there's only one warp left by the time we get to 32, because this masks off uh, when, uh, when uh, so in this, in this case, we're going to change it to being a check to make sure that S is greater than 32. Uh, we're going to check over here if, you know, or we're only going to go until we only have a warp left of some reduction to do. And in that case, we can instead do something uh, with the device function. And we haven't talked about device functions any, um, in this course so far. So device functions are similar to just regular C++ functions, except they are callable from the GPU. So you can think of this not so much as another kernel, but just as a kind of a helper function for the GPU kernel. So in this case, we're going to take this last warp operation and instead of having a continuation of this loop with wasted work, uh, only the last warp or the uh, final first warp of the thread block that's threads say zero through 31 will actually execute this. So if TID, which is the thread ID X uh, index is less than 32. So just that uh, first warp, it will call this warp reduce function and then it will do this, uh, all of these additions of the, the final iteration. So it's more or less loop unrolling. So we're taking a loop and instead of going through the loop, we know exactly how many times it's going to uh, continue on because we're just stripping out the final couple of iterations and we know exactly how many that will be going from 32 down to one. And then after this TID uh, to TID plus one, we'll have our uh, we'll have our final uh, sum for that thread block. And in the case of uh, uh, the first kernel launch that we do um, on the entire 65, 536 vector, that will, uh, that will, this will happen and this will generate the, uh, each of our, uh, our, our vector of partial results. And then on our second one, this will gener end up generating our final answer. An important note right here, we're avoiding the use of sync threads here, mainly because it's not necessary. The only reason why sync threads is necessary is uh, when we have when we have to do coordination between multiple warps uh, within a thread block. Now, in this case, we don't need to worry about that because there's only going to be one active warp. Uh, but we do need to put this volatile here. And this volatile is there because we don't want any kind of uh, compiler optimization to cache something in register and not actually write the uh, data into shared memory. So we don't want any of those uh, compiler optimizations in there. And because we're not doing uh, something like sync threads that will force the eviction from registers into shared memory, this, vial, this volatile does it for us. So let's go ahead and jump and look at our uh, changes to the code. So right here we have the uh, our device function. So that's going to be specified with just this prefix device before it. Then here's our volatile int to our pointer to shared memory. And then we'll pass in this int t, which will just be the, uh, the thread ID. And the reason why we need to um, pass in this thread ID is because uh, you know this is going to be happen on all of these different warps. So we need to make sure that we're accessing the correct portion of shared memory. Now, um, when it comes to our inner loop right here, we need to change this from be, go, doing every single iteration of the sum reduction to doing all the iterations until we're down to a warp. So this bounds check goes until 32. And then we do those last, those last couple iterations from within this warp reduce uh, device function. So then uh, we call warp reduce with partial sum, which is our shared memory that we allocate. Um, and also the thread ID and uh, that's it. Uh, and then finally, uh, if thread ID X is equal to zero, so we do that final write back like we've always been doing. So what this will do is it will, 
compute those last couple iterations of sum reduction, but at the end, um, after this point, uh, by the time we get to this uh, check right here, where we're just looking at the first thread of the entire uh, thread block, it's exactly, we're at the exact same state that we were in every single other one of our uh, implementations. And then down, down here, we're going to do the exact same call to some reduction twice, one for the first uh, major reduction until we get the size down to a single thread block. And then because GPs don't have uh, you know, global synchronization mechanisms, um, uh, we're going ahead and we're, we're using uh, kernel invocations for a global synchronization. And of course, we'll do some asserts. Um, and we'll do this quick uh, printf and scanf just to verify that we get the correct result. So let's go ahead and rebuild this. And we'll go ahead and launch it after it builds. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. So we got the correct result of 65.536. Um, we didn't hit the assert, so or we, uh, we didn't fail on the assert. So let's go to what we're really caring about with all of these optimizations, which with, which is uh, performance numbers. Now, if you remember last time, uh, our performance numbers, we saw that originally uh, in our first naive implementation, we got to 30 or 31 or so milliseconds uh, or microseconds. Then after that, we you know we did a lot better. We started getting down to 16 uh, microseconds, into 14 or 13 microseconds. And then we saw that with our latest version, where we compacted the uh, those warp uh, the warps that were uh, or all the threads that were inactive after the first iteration, and we packed those into uh, into the work for other threads. We saw that we got it all the way down to nine uh, microseconds. So let's see how well we did this time. So let's go ahead and open up our performance analysis tool, NVIDIA Insight. We'll profile the application, we'll run it. Okay, there we go, and we'll do launches. There we go. So we got all the way down to around six microseconds this time. So, you know, again, we're seeing we're still seeing these really, really, really big jumps in performance improvement. So we went all the way from nine uh, microseconds or about a bit over nine microseconds. Um, and we saved about another, uh, or we sp saw another speed up over that version by around 30% uh, or so. So, you know, we cut out about, you know, three whole uh, microseconds in this case. So we're still seeing these great benefits. We have uh, only one more optimization left that we're going to do. And so we'll save that though for the next video. But um, that's going to be it for this video in terms of uh, some reduction. So again, just to kind of summarize what the key idea was, uh, instead of wasting time in having a whole bunch of active threads uh, or inactive threads that aren't actually doing anything in this loop and constantly calling sync threads, uh, we acknowledge that only one warp will be active at the very at the very last couple of iterations of this loop. So instead, we stop this loop early we call this uh, device function without any synchronization because it's only one warp active in the thread block and we get a pretty good performance increase because of that. So like I said, that's gonna do it for this video. Feel free to look at uh, github.com slash coffee before arch for, uh, uh, for all the repositories relating to this course, which is CUDA, uh, this uh, CUDA crash course. Um, as well as any of the other courses, such as the research one called This Week in Architecture, or the Practical Parallelism in C++, where we go over some, um, uh, some threading and synchronization techniques. So uh, for this uh, example, we went ahead and looked at, uh, let's see if it's on here. I don't think I pushed it yet. So let's go ahead and push that so I don't forget. So we'll go ahead and look at changes. And we'll do, uh, and we'll get rid of this NVIDIA stuff, the profiling. And so we'll go ahead and push, and this will be some reduction device function example. And we'll commit it, and we'll push it. And 
Let's see. Ah, so I gotta pull first. Pull and then push. There we go. I must have updated the README. So here we go. So this should be updated now. And it is. So here's our example we've been through today, some reduction device uh, function. So this is the code we looked at today. So feel free to download this, play around with it, and let me know if you have any questions. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.